quick revision video on clock reactions. So we'll start with some essentials and then we'll look at a question. So a clock reaction can be used to obtain the initial rate of a reaction. So the time from the start of a reaction until there's a visible change is measured. So on the right hand side I'm just going to play a quick video clip of a reaction that I've done. I missed it. Good job I recorded it, isn't it? <laughs> then the reaction's repeated several times at the same temperature but using different initial concentrations of one reactant. All of the other concentrations must be kept constant and you basically just measure the time for that visible change to take place at those different concentrations. The initial rate can be expressed as one over the time and we're assuming that the rate is constant during that time period and so the average rate is going to be the same as the initial rate. Now it's worth pointing out that the longer the time period for the visible change the less accurate the initial rate is going to be because the rate does actually vary during that uh, during the reaction. So we'll look at a question now so if you want to have a read through that and have a think about what you might write as an answer Pause the video and then play on when you're ready. So the first thing we need to do is make some solutions of hydrogen peroxide at different concentrations. So I've just specified those there. There's five different concentrations. So I'm going to do five different experiments. I'm going to measure out appropriate quantities of the other chemicals and put them into a suitable container, a beaker, a conical flask. Now because iodine is produced in this reaction, that's actually what was going on in that video, we're going to add a small amount of starch indicator because when sufficient iodine is produced by the reaction, it's going to go blue-black. So then we'd add the one mole per decimeter cubed hydrogen peroxide solutions, that's the first of these concentrations, and we measure the time taken for that blue-black colour to form, and then we just repeat for the other solutions Remembering to say that we'd use the same volumes and concentrations of the other chemicals. The rate is 1 over the time. And then we'd plot a graph of 1 over time against concentration. So effectively we're making a rate concentration graph. And if it's first order with respect to the hydrogen peroxide, we should get a straight line graph through the origin. Showing that the rate is directly proportional to the concentration.